Okay, welcome back everybody. This is our second video in our geometry series and today we're going to take a look at the uh, properties of angles that form when you have intersecting lines. And we're going to begin over here where I have drawn a 90 degree angle, a right angle up at the top. And we have two angles kind of inside that right angle. And uh, in a situation like this we say that these two angles are complementary to each other. I'm going to write that word over here spelt a little bit differently from the way uh, you would pay a complement. These are complementary, not complementary, so there is an E right here. Now let's begin by figuring out what the value of one of these angles. We've seen how to use the protractor properly. Let's put that knowledge to use. My zeros on the line, I count up 10, 20. I'm just shy of the 30 there by 2 degrees, so that's 28 degrees. So I know that this angle has a value of 28 degrees. Now we can measure the angle on the other side, um, but some of you are probably figuring out already there's no need to do that. Um, I can look right across from the zero going up past the 50, just past the 60 by 2 degrees. We can see that this one is actually 62 degrees. So with complementary angles, uh, when we know one, we can find the other just by subtracting it from 90 degrees. So you can quickly see that 90 minus 28 gives us the 62 degrees remaining. Now we need to um, come up with good habits for showing our math thinking uh, when we're doing these sorts of problems. So if you were asked to come up with angle ABC, you would uh, show your thinking this way. So we know that angle A B, C equals 62 degrees, and uh, we know this because it is complementary, and we're going to just use short forms because otherwise this will get uh, tedious very quickly. It's complementary to angle C, B, D. So that's how we can show our thinking on that. Now a similar situation, a little bit different, is when instead of dealing with a 90 degree angle, we're dealing with a 180 degree angle. And angle EFG in this case is 180 degrees. If I um, measure the smaller of my two angles here, I think you'll see pretty quickly it is 35 degrees. So this one's 35. And some of you are probably thinking ahead a little bit here and thinking, well, if this plus that has to equal the 180 degree angle, then we can get this one with a little subtraction. So this time instead of subtracting from 90, we're subtracting from the straight line, the 180. And so that leaves us with 145 degrees for the other side over here. Again, to just show our math thinking, um, Oh, uh, I should mention, by the way, that when two angles add up to 180 degrees, they have a slightly different name. Instead of being complementary, they are supplementary. Supplementary, again with that E in the, in the name, supplementary. So now we can say that angle EFH equals 145 degrees and our reason is that it is supplementary to angle HFG, which was given. So that takes us to the next concept we need to look at, which is what happens when two lines intersect and just pass right through each other. It's the situation we have here. And I want you to just look at the angles uh, around this intersection of two lines. As I change it, you should notice pattern or maybe um, some similarities and some differences here. And probably many of you have it at this point. Um, you can see that at any given point this angle is always the same measure as that one. This angle always the same measure as that one and because they're on opposite sides of the intersection this property is called um, opposite angles. Basically if you know one side you can claim to know the other side because it's opposite. So I have a situation here 
where we have two um, intersecting lines. And looking at this, you can probably see right away that this side must also be 45 degrees, and you'd be absolutely right. It is 45 degrees. In terms of showing our thinking, we would say then that angle GJI is 45 degrees because it is opposite, and we're going to use short forms again just so the writing doesn't get too tedious. It is opposite to angle KJH. You may also notice that if I kind of cover up this information down here that we have another straight angle. Um, uh, G, J, H is straight and therefore these two are supplementary and need to add to 180. So we now know that G, J, K must be equal to 180 minus 45 which gives us the 135 degrees because it is supplementary to angle KJH. And um, once you know that that's 135, what else do you already know? Exactly. You know the angle on the other side because it's opposite, and so we can say that angle IJH equals 135 degrees because it is opposite to angle GJK. Good. So now um, what I have for you here is a typical sort of um, system of intersecting lines that you might need to uh, solve some of the angles for. So let's start right at the beginning. Angle ABC, you've probably noticed it is part of a 90 degree angle and if you add it to CBD you get that complete 90 degree angle here. So we know they're complementary. We know that 90 minus 20 gives the 70 for here. So we know that ABC must be 70 degrees, and that's because it is complementary to angle CBD. That brings us to EBC, and for this we kind of need to ignore this line that comes down here and just have a look at this angle that comes right across that whole area there. And um, you should fairly quickly be able to see that there's a straight line, EBD, and this angle here is supplementary to the one we're looking at. So we know uh, that the straight line is 180, so 180 minus 20 is 160, and that is because that angle is supplementary to angle CBD. FBD, this angle down on the bottom. If you're able to kind of once again filter this line of, out of your thinking, you'll see we just have two lines that intersect each other. And we already know what this angle is on top. EBC is 160, and you might have noticed FBD is simply opposite to it. So it is also 160 degrees because it is opposite to EBC. And then similarly, this final one, E, oh, I should have written that as EBF, by the way, my apologies. EBF is also opposite to this angle, and so it's 20 degrees, because it is opposite to CBD. Okay, so that gives us basically the information we need. Sometimes in the textbook you'll notice that rather than having three letters naming an angle, you might come across an angle, and if they write the letter inside, let's say as an X or an A, once they do that, you may simply refer to the angle as X. It'll be written on the inside, not as naming a vertex. So don't forget, in classroom today, make sure that you check to see what your assignment is, and uh, I wish you the very best with it. Thank <laughs> you.